What a wonderful song and a prayer for us this morning to know that the King is around us, His glory is among us, and may His fire fall as we speak. Oh, oh. So, uh, you know, as we've been worshiping and singing and talking about eyes, and I, I have been um, just been reminded at, at the wonderful gift of sight. Um, just thinking about it. How many of you know? How many of you are like you? You you are always aware of the of the beauty and the wonder of being able to see of the sight that we've been given. And then sometimes something happens. You know, we, we kind of go along and maybe sometimes take that for granted. But then something happens. Something beautiful happens, and we're reminded that how how grand of a gift it is to have sight. The other night um, we were reminded. Uh, Alisa called Kathy, or maybe she texted her, I don't remember, but she said, go outside and look at the moon. You know? And so Kathy came and got me and grabbed my hand. We went outside and we looked at the moon. It was cold. It was like 32 degrees, but we're out on the porch and we're gawking at this beautiful moon, full moon, shining bright. And I was reminded of the wonder of sight, how beautiful it is, how wonderful of a, a gift it is to see. And then sometimes when I'm thinking about the wonder of sight and the gift of sight, and I think about people who cannot see, who are blind, and then I'm reminded by people who have written poetry or spoken words who are blind and talk about how they see and the things they hear and the things they feel, and how they experience the world even deeper maybe, or more intimately maybe than some of us who have eyes. And then I'm reminded of how Jesus talked about blind guys, guides, people who had eyes to see but couldn't see. This morning, as we're talking about all things new, and that how God has spoken the word and said in Revelations, behold, I make all things new. God is also talking about our eyes, our ability to see the world differently, to see each other differently, to see Jesus right before us our eyes made new. This morning, I would like to uh, do some, um, another um, kind of in-depth Bible study or a, a kind of a, a kind of open our scriptures up and, and look at some words of Jesus and some scripture to help us understand what it means to have our eyes made new. I, I would like to begin with a scripture in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew uh, chapter 6. If you want to turn there, it's Matthew 6, and I'm going to read verses 19 through 24. Jesus says these words, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. 
you cannot serve both God and money. <laughs> hmm. Interesting verse, huh? The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye's healthy, your whole body is full of light, but if your eye's unhealthy, your whole body is full of darkness. Healthy eyes, unhealthy eyes, what's Jesus saying here? Now, I've heard some folks talk about this, and uh, they talk about the kind of the garbage in, garbage out theory. You know, they say that Jesus is saying what we look at with our eyes affects our state, the state of our soul, the state of our spirit. What we focus on determines what kind of character we have. It's kind of that garbage in, garbage out. What we look at affects who we are and how we behave. But it doesn't seem to fit the context to me. It seems like Jesus is saying more than garbage in, garbage out. I think it would help a moment for us to, to, ref, to understand a little bit of the difference between the theories of how we understand sight to work how our eyes work, and the way they thought your, our eyes worked in Jesus' day, uh, the way sight works. And there's two words that I've, uh, and I didn't, I didn't know this until this week, so, you know, these are nice fancy words, but, you know, I just, I just Googled it and found out. But so, so today we talk about an intro mission. That is, that is, light is received from the outside and bounces, light kind of bounces off the things we see, and then it enters our eyes and we see. And uh, all of us think, well, sure, that's how it works. It's out there, and the light comes in through our eyes, and we see images, and it creates sight. But in Jesus' day, that's not the theory. That was not the theory. That's not the way they understood sight to work. Plato and the Stoics and spoke of things that were more like extra mission, like the light, the fire was inside of our eyes and it went out from us. That, that there was, our lights were like a, a fire, a type of fire, kind of like a flashlight. And the light came out of us and illuminated the world and it, it interacted with the light out, source outside of us and we could see out of the eyes and into the world, this light would come. So the light inside you, if it's darkness, oh, how dark's the darkness? You know, there's also like scripture and, and, and writings, Hebrew writings that talk about this. So there's an old book called uh, First Enoch. And there's a story in there about when Moses was born. And, and, the, and the verse of, says, when the child was born, his body was whiter than snow and redder than a rose. And when he opened his eyes, the house shone like the sun little story about Moses, little baby opening his eyes, and the light from his eyes lights up the room. Revelations 1.14, when, when John had his vision, he said his head and his hair were white as white wool, white as the snow. His eyes were like flames of fire, fire within the eyes shining out. Daniel 10 has a similar vision. He says, its body was like beryl, his face like lightning, his eyes like a flaming torch. And then Psalms 38, 10 says, my heart throbs, my strength fails. As for the light in my eyes, it also has gone from me. Light inside of us, coming out. Now here's an interest, another interesting tidbit about uh, this, this verse. This word that Jesus uses for eye, when he talks about your eye being healthy or unhealthy, 
the word transliterates A Y I N, I N. It's the same word they would use for I, and, the, and, and they would use the same word for spring. And it literally means source. A spring is the source of water, and the eye is the source of light. Interesting, huh? But it seems to be more than just the way we see or how we see that Jesus is talking about it. When Jesus talks about our unhealthy eye, he seems to be using what we would call a, a double entendre, uh, like where a word can be interpreted in two ways, an unhealthy eye. When he talks about an unhealthy eye, it's also used as an evil eye or a bad eye. And some translations say, a stingy eye, a stingy eye, unwilling to help those that are in need, unwilling or unable to see people in need. Stingy eye. Now there's scripture where the same word that Jesus uses, this unhealthy eye, it's used in other places, and I would like for us to take a moment and look at those. One of those places is in Deuteronomy 28, verse 54. It is talking about a broken, when the people of God broke covenant and the curse that came on them because of their failure to keep the covenant. And there was this devastating famine and it says in verse 20 and verse um, 54 even the most refined and gentle of men among you will begrudge food to his own brother to the wife he embraces and to the last of his remaining children even the most refined and gentle of men among you will begrudge, will have a bad eye, will have an evil eye, will have a stingy eye. In Proverbs um, 23, verse 6, it says, Do not eat the food of a begrudging host. Do not crave his delicacies. In this passage, it says, do not eat the food of a bad-eyed host, a stingy-eyed host. The same word that Jesus uses is used here. The King James would translate this, eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. And then there's this passage in Matthew um, 20. Matthew 20, uh, verse 15. This is the story where um, this fella goes and hires some people to work for him at the beginning of the day, and he makes an agreement. He says, I'll give you one denarius for if you come and work for me. And the guy comes at night, he hires this guy at nine o'clock, and then he goes back at noon, and he hires somebody else. And then he goes back at five in the afternoon, and he hires another person. At the end of the day, he, they, they settle up, and he pays everyone a denarius. And the guy who worked all day is kind of complaining. He's bitter because the guy who only worked an hour gets the same amount. Uh, and then this is the conversation that the guy has in verse 15. He says, take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious? Are you begrudging, 
because I am generous? Are you evil-eyed because I am good? Very interesting, huh? Same word that Jesus uses in the Sermon on the Mount. He's saying, is thy, this is King James, is thy eye evil because I am good? This word that Jesus uses when he talks about a, an unhealthy eye, he's talking about a stingy eye. He's talking about the person who's unable to see people in need and unwilling to give, to be generous, to help them. Now let's put this in context. Let's read the verse, let's reread the verse before and the verse after where Jesus talks about our unhealthy eye. The verse before, verse 19. Do not store up yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Also, Jesus is giving a lesson and he's saying, where are your values? Where is your heart? Do you concern yourselves only with earthly things and material things and things of this world? Is that where your treasures are? Is that where your values are placed? Or have you set your eyes on heaven? Have you put your treasure in eternal things? Have you aligned your heart and your eyes with the things of God, the things that are eternal? Do you value things in heaven more than things on earth? It's about your treasure, your values. And Jesus says you have the ability to do one of two things. You can place your values in the kingdom of God, in heaven, or on the things of this earth. Material wealth alone. Now let's look at the verse after. Jesus says, no one can serve two masters Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Another verse where Jesus is talking about money and God. He's talking about our hearts. What do we value? Do we place God before money, or do we place money before God? It is about values clarification. Jesus is giving a sermon, and in his sermon, he makes three statements. Where are your treasures, in heaven or earth? What is your eye like? Is it healthy or unhealthy? Are you generous or stingy? And then finally, what do you serve? Do you serve God or do you serve money? This morning, as we read this verse and we live into this, this theme that we've been working on, oh God, make all things new. Let us pray and ask God to make our eyes new. God, give us healthy eyes. Help us to see this world the way you see it. Help us to see people the way you see them. God, help us to look at others and not see objects. Not objects that are used by us to get what we want. Or see them as objects who stand in the way of what we want. But help us to see them as individuals, as children of the living God. And if they have need... Help us, God, to be the kind of people who are generous and open-fisted and give of our resources to help meet their needs. Help us to see people the way you see them, Lord. And when we see need, give us healthy eyes, generous eyes. God, heal our eyes so that and make them good and healthy so that we can see the value of treasures stored in heaven and help us to serve you god and not 
material wealth. God, Lord Jesus, touch our eyes. Touch them once. Touch them twice. Touch them three times if you must. But give us eyes to see the world the way you see the world. Give us eyes that are good, healthy, and generous. Amen. There's a grace where the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire standing next to me there was another in the waters holding back the seas and should i ever need a mind of how i've been set free there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me there is another in the fire All my dead left the dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore Should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I won't bow to the things of this world and I know I will never be in the fire is standing next to me there is another in the waters holding back the seas and should I ever need your mind the power set me free there is a grave which holds nobody for the power lives in me there is another in the fire see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him and i can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between where's them i can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in and nothing stands between us nothing stands between There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all these things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. We know we will never be I'll count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I can see the light in the 
Church, in closing, let me offer this word of benediction. I think it's important now for us to remember that um, that we can see Christ around us. Christ is no longer here in the world, and we are to be Christ to the world, and we are also called to see Christ in the world. We are the feet with which Christ is to go about doing good. We are the hands through which Christ now brings blessing. We can promise to keep awake, to live each moment to the fullest, and to look with eyes of compassion, and to act with Christian kindness. Amen.